If you've ever phoned or emailed someone on another continent or browsed a foreign website, you can dial up some gratitude for something that happened a century and a half ago. It's been 150 years since the first transatlantic cable began ushering in global communications. And now tech giants are taking that undersea revolution a big step further. Here's Mark Albert. When you pick up the phone to reach out and touch someone across the oceans, it's only possible because of ships like the Global Sentinel. This is cable tank number one. And what am I standing on right now? You're standing on fiber optic cable that's going to be laid from here towards Brazil. This is how worldwide communication begins. Jeff Sanders is a captain at TE Connectivity Subcom, which calls itself the world's largest provider of under-ocean fiber optic cable. They're calling it the same way they did in the 1800s. He gave us a rare view of more than 900 miles of cable spooled tightly by hand in one of three side-by-side -side tanks aboard the ship anchored in the port of Newington in New Hampshire. So the cable we're walking on right now will be under the ocean carrying my phone calls? Yes, it will. It's a good chance any call you make to South America in the future could be on this exact cable for the next 20, 25 years. Cable comes right off into the ocean from here. Robots take over from there, diving to a depth too deep for humans. The machines use water jets to create a trench, allowing the cable to sink into the seabed and become buried. 95% of all telephone and data is transferred over submarine cables. Not satellite. Not satellite. It's what allows us to rely on instant everything. Phone calls, banking, web surfing, email, streaming video, and other communication. Heavy case? And it all began 150 years ago. We have here samples of the early cables from the 1850s. This is what the first permanent cable looked like under the Atlantic. Absolutely. Barney Finn at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History helped string together an exhibit commemorating the 150th anniversary of the first permanent transatlantic cable and the man who assembled the financial, political, and technical prowess to make it happen entrepreneur Cyrus Field. Some of the items have not been on display in more than a century. And this indeed is the trace, the cable going across the Atlantic. Laid in rough seas, the first few copper cables broke or burnt out. When it finally worked after a decade of failure, Field wrote to his wife on July 27, 1866, all well, thank God. Great Britain's Queen Victoria congratulated U.S. President Andrew Johnson in this message. If I was living in 1866 and I wanted to send a message to a relative in Ireland or in England, right. it would take 10 days by ship to get there, however long to write the message, and 10 days to get back. Right. With this cable now, it was what, minutes? Yeah, yeah, that's right. It sounds like this was the original information age. That's right. For the next 90 years, the cable handled messages by Morse code before telephone cables arrived. Today, a maze of fiber optic cables crisscross the oceans and the U.S. What is the main challenge in moving vast amounts of data? Capacity. Mike Murphy co-founded the Boston-based telecom consultancy NEF. He says the explosion of data use around the world is leading to innovative partnerships like Facebook and Microsoft, which have teamed up to build a blazing fast 160 terabyte per second cable from Virginia to Spain. What does this mean for the family sitting at home logging onto the internet? Better, faster service. You know, so today we live in a world of instant gratification. So if you're standing in the grocery store and you want to see what's in your refrigerator to finish your shopping, you can actually access a camera inside your refrigerator. Think about driverless cars and think about the amount of data that's required. It sounds like what you're saying is these companies building these new transatlantic cables, they're not going on offense, they're on defense trying to keep up with all the growing traffic. For sure. We can transmit the entire contents of the Library of Congress across the Atlantic Ocean in two seconds. At the TE Subcom plant in New Hampshire, the company uses colored glass strands of fiber to create the cables for those over-the-top providers, like Google, Facebook, and Microsoft, explains Vice President John Dufour. Look at how thin these fibers are. This is like a hair. These are the size of a strand of human hair, but about a thousand times stronger. And demand is just as strong. The cable highway runs to the Global Sentinel ship 24 hours a day until fully loaded. Once installed in the dark depths of the ocean, it'll be a highway 
of fiber optic light. It's connecting the world and connecting families, and it's a mission that we enjoy doing. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Mark Albert, Newington, New Hampshire. It's amazing. And Mark sent us these thin, thin little threads. Yeah, they, it's Have housed in this. When they put it under. It's housed in a thicker thing, but the actual cable itself. I mean, it's you can barely see it. It's and this is what the Library of Congress is traveling in on two seconds. That's astounding. Yeah, it's extraordinary. Wow. That's